Hello everyone, my name is Mr. N Jersey and welcome to my channel. In this video we are back with the fifth episode of the new Star Boat build series here on my channel. In this video we're going to be working on the lights, we're going to get the control surfaces all connected, going to get the stabilization system and we're also going to be adding some lights to our boat. But before we get started, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget that like and subscribe button and click the little bell icon to be notified from upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. And while you're watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos. So that all said, let's get straight into and get started with this video. So we're back again with the next episode of the new Saw Boat build series here on the channel. Now in the last episode we got quite a bit done with the painting, we tested out the engines and we got a few details done. Now in this episode what we're going to be doing is I want to add some little bit of details here and there. I want to get the lights in the engine room, I want to get the screens in for the dashboard inside the cockpit. I want to do a few other things. I think I also want to get the rudders or the steering done for the ship. So let's just jump straight into it and let's start working on it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go into the engine rooms and I think I want to get some lighting in here. Now, I'm not 100% sure what type of lighting I was thinking of, but I think we can possibly go and do some down lighting of some sort, or we could just go with some regular, just some regular lights. Let's see, we can grab some lights here. Let's change the color. And I'm thinking probably one over here. Let's see if we can actually put that. Yeah, we can put it there. Uh, so we can get one light there, let's get another light maybe over there and another one over here. Okay, so that gives us three lights inside this room. We'll also change the color of them. So I'll probably go with a somewhat of a dark, maybe like a dark brown possibly, something like that. We'll see how it looks in a few seconds. So we've got additive, change the color, change the color, change the color. So that should give us like a nice warm yellowish light inside here, but we'll see once we spawn it in and see if it's going to be good enough. Uh, and the way I'm going to turn this light on is I'm going to use a player sensor. I like using player sensors just because then you don't have to fill around with any light switches or anything. And we're probably going to get the player sensor probably right here. And then we're going to say that if anyone is inside this compartment and let's say they're within eight meters, and let's do hemisphere should be fine then it goes and turns the lights on so you can just go from that into our lights and we go to the other side do the same thing one two three electricity we're just going to go straight off of our battery for now uh the reason why is at a later stage in the build i probably will be adding a circuit breaker and doing a whole circuit board system inside my electrical room that will be in here this is going to be my electrical rooms where I'll have some panels and some flip switches and everything. But I like to get everything in, get it tested, and then actually do the circuit breaks at the last point. A lot of you guys also commented and said that uh, I forgot to put generators on this engine. I haven't forgotten. I am going to get them in. I've left a little bit of space over here. The reason why I don't add generators in at this point is I wait to see how much electricals I'm going to put in, uh, how much power they're going to consume and then based on that i'll then add a decent amount of generators depending on the size and obviously the consumption because there's no point in putting in 20 and now and i only need one or only putting one in now and i need 20 later on so that's why i always leave it till later so we've got those lights in. we should be able to spawn the vessel in and let's go and test those those lights are actually going and working so let's go and jump up on the boat here get up on the ladder climb along I changed these to styling hatches, I think, because I had the extra space. I thought, yeah, why not? So we jump in here. You can see the lights go and get turned on. We can close this hatch. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. Let's actually just change it to nighttime and let's see what that would look like. I think that looks pretty cool. I think the, the light tone is perfect. And you can see as we jump out of here, the light goes and turns off. So it just senses a play inside here. You can go and have a look, walk around in here. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so that's the lights done. Let's go back and just bring it to daytime again. And let's carry on. So the next thing I want to do is let's do this staring here at the back. Now, water jets don't just work with a simple node, unfortunately. Uh, they have three nodes on them. So deflector A, deflector B, and they also have trim. So pretty much what this means is if you go and send a one to this, it will go and put the deflector A on, which is the left one over here. So what happens is the vessel will then go and move either left or right. And the same goes with deflector B and so on and so forth. Now it's been a while since I've actually worked with water jets. So I think I still remember how to use them. Uh, and if I'm correct, we can just use an invert block. 
So we can go and get an invert block. Let's go and put this inside here. I'm going to keep it to blue because that way we know what it is. And I should only need one of those inverts. And what we're going to do is we're going to then going to go from our seat. So we're going to go and take the A and D and we're going to go into deflector A and deflector A. And then we're going to go once again from A here into the invert. And then from the invert, we're then going to go into deflector B and deflector B. OK, so that should then allow us to go left or right. Now, we could also set it that when it reads that we're going negative, it could go and turn both those deflectors on. So that means we can go in reverse. But that's maybe something we can look at later on. Let's go and spawn this in and just see if those deflectors are the right way and if they are going to work. As I said earlier, it's been a while since I actually used water jets. So let's go and get this on. Throttle up. Great. Let's go and move forwards here. Turn left. OK, so we just need to get it the other direction then cool great so that is done i'm happy that we can now go and turn uh, another thing i wanted to do is because these water jets have got built-in trim i like to go and add the trim over to the seat so we can manually adjust it but you guys know me i also like to have a stabilization system so we're going to be using a gyro and you probably think well why is he using a gyro well gyros are the best way to actually in the quickest way to get a stabilization system in your boat so if we go and place one down there, perfect. So that's going to turn on when we get our key switch on. And what we're going to do is we're going to now feed some things into this. So what we're going to be feeding in is we can go and let's see, we're going to get this connected to our up and down. So it's going to measure our pitch. So let's just go over to the gyro. There's our stabilized pitch. And we're then going to connect that to our trim of our water jets. We're also then going to go to the up and down of our seat. And that's going to go into the input of the pitch. That way we can come onto our seat here and we can manually adjust the trim, whether we want to go up and down. We put that on sticky too. So that way we can manually go and adjust it. Probably about 20% should be good. The next issue is the roll. So if we're rolling, we want the actual vessels to stabilize and we can use these trims here at the back to do that. Now you can either use just normal logic or you can use a microprocessor. I'm going to be building a microprocessor to do this. Pretty much what we're doing is we're taking that what we have now and then we're going to be going and taking one of them putting them out and taking the other one and inverting it okay that way we all stabilize ourselves here so what i'm going to do is let's go into our microprocessor let's go and create a new one so we can call this the um saw boat stab okay and that way i know what it is great logic wise we're going to need a number input that is going to be our let's see so we're going to have one input which will be our actual roll and we're going to have another one which will be our pitch this is similar to like a plane we're using the pitch and the and the actual roll on the same um rudders we can go here number input number input perfect and we're going to need two number outputs actually yeah two number outputs so let's do left and we'll do right Perfect. Okay, so that should be enough. We can change this to a number and make sure this is out and make sure this is out. And we can go into our logic. Okay, and this is where the magic in theory is going to happen. We've got our roll in, our pitch in, and then we have our two outputs. Great. So we're going to need some ad blocks. So we're going to get two ad blocks to start with. And what we're doing is we're then going to take the pitch to both of them because that's setting it out normally. And then we're going to take our roll over to one, but then we're going to go and invert the second one. Okay, so I'm just going to get a simple function block, put that over here, get that connected over there, and we're going to do negative x. Okay, that way it's going to invert it. And just like that, we've got our stabilization system. Okay, we can add that in, go and find it, put it in somewhere where we have space, and we can get everything connected. So once again, we go from here, which is our pitch, into our pitch. We're then going to go and take our roll into our roll. And then we're going to go and connect this to the right trim and connect this one to the left trim. Just like that. Okay, this is turning on. Make sure this has got some electric. Happy days. And let's go and test this. So now that gyro should be stabilizing us with the trim over there. Let's go obviously go and see and test it. See if we need to invert anything. We shouldn't have to. So increase throttle up now in theory 
If I go and do a hard turn left now, this should be completely stable. Yep. Can you see how, how it hardly moved? Just kept nice and steady there. And the same thing goes if we get the waves on. This is going to be the first test for the waves. So wind 100%. It's going to be interesting. This water jets has got a lot of power to them. Yeah, we kind of just fly around. We might want to get some fins on just in case because once you're out of water, the water jets don't really do anything. But can you see how we're keeping almost 100% steady here? And that's the water jets that are doing a trim there to keep us so steady. But yeah, look at that. It's just picking the nose up so much. But yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I like how it's keeping it so steady. Can zoom out a bit. Look at that. I probably want to trim it trim it ever so slightly down. So maybe like that. That's what I would probably trim it to. That way it does a really nice maybe a little bit up. Maybe I want to change the sensitivity on that up and down. But look how steady that's keeping there. Really quite nice. Cool, I'm happy with that. Uh, I said I still I need to clamp the left and right because you can see how much we're turning left and right there. Okay, um, great. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's bring this back into the workbench and I also want to get rid of the wind factor now. Cool, let's go get rid of the wind. Okay, so the as I said earlier, I also want to get some fin rudders in and the reason why I want the fin rudders is just because when you're working with with these water jets once it jumps into the air those water jets don't do anything so i want some way of to control it once we're in the air or if we ever do get airborne so i'm just going to go here and i'm simply just going to get the let's see a white we're going to put this down actually i want to get the symmetry mode back on we're just going to go and put that there okay so you can see this has got up down great we can also go and paint this well, while we're here, might as well get the electric on. Okay, so we can just go and paint that. So those fins are there. And if we ever do get airborne, at least then we do have those fins in there, which will hopefully protect us, which is quite cool. So we need to get that connected up too. So that's just going to be the pitch. That's going to be coming directly from that gyro. So let's go and get the pitch there. And that's going to go directly to those two fin rudders at the back. We can go and test that now also. Just making sure that those are working and they don't need to be inverted and jump over here let's get the key button let's get that up let's go forwards yep that pretty much looks spot on let's turn left a little bit yeah let's turn right yep spot on left a little more i need to get a little more throttle there nice Pretty happy with that and how those you can see the fin rudders there at the back and how they're doing their work when we turn left and right and everything so yeah i'm really happy with that and how that's turning out so far uh let's go and back to the workbench and the next thing i want to do is i want to work on the actual displays up in the cavern and see if we can get those all finished and kind of get the design there and then hopefully we could probably plop in some of the systems and things that we want, like navigation, maybe a radar, uh, light systems, all those kind of different things. So let's bring us back into the workbench. All right, so the next thing we're going to be doing is getting some of the screens and just start planning out how the front dash is going to be looking like. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just get rid of this key switch and the throttle. We'll get it back at a later stage, but just for now, we, can, we don't need it. So I'm going to clear some room here. And we're going to go and get a pivot. So let's see, we can get a pivot. Okay, so we've got a pivot in. We can do some painting and things later on, but for now, let's just get the pivot in. And let's see where we're going to get it. So probably about, yeah, probably about there should be fine. We can even step it in here so that we don't have to look at it anymore. Uh, we can obviously just fix the color on the outside here and fix the color in the inside there too. And once we're there, we should, in theory, be able to just bring this across and bring this across like so. And that way we can just go and drop it down. So like that. And that should, in theory, work. So let's go and get a throttle 
actually a keypad just so I can test what number I need. I'm probably going to go with like a 0 0.5 or 0 0.4, but I like to just get a keypad in and we're going to test that and we'll get electric to that, that and that. Yep. And now we should be able to go and spawn that in and test what rotation we need for that to look the best. Okay. Jump on the actual boat, jump inside. You can see it's currently up like this. We should be able to go and bring this to 0.3. You can see that's folding down, so maybe like 0.4. Let's go and move around. Let's just see how that's going to look. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad, actually. You can see we've got a nice little slant here. We just need to go and make some changes here, fill this block, this space in. But uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, cool, so let's just go and fix that. So that was what, 0 .0 0 0.5. So we can delete the keypad now and we can just get a constant number. So constant number, let's go inside where we have all our logic. Go with light blue again, put it inside. Let's go with 0 0.5 there. And we're going to go and give a number to that little pivot that we have. Great, make sure it's got some electric for now perfect and that goes in that's where our screen is going to go so it's standing out a bit so you can imagine all the screens and displays and things yeah not bad uh cool let's go and start filling it up with what we want on the actual dash so here is probably where we're going to get a dial so that's going to be for our speed more than likely over there we're probably going to get a throttle lever over here so throttle lever something like that just make sure i'm staying on this cool and make sure that this dial is actually on the rotating part of our dash cool so we've got that in we can probably get some little displays and things here so over here let's do one two three let's get a display and we're gonna go with can imagine this will be maybe our map screen Actually, let's go cross one and maybe cross one more. Yeah, why not? So we can go there, maybe skip to, and then go with another screen over here. Okay, so we'll have two screens there, and then there, 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 and there. We'll probably go with some composite instrument panels where we'll put some information maybe about the engines inside here. And then here may have just be some different switches and things, which I think would look pretty cool. Uh, we could even add some panels there if we wanted to or something on the side here. We still need to. I'm definitely going to put some panels here, though, like this. So that that person will have some panels and then probably a keypad there and a keypad there. Cool, but I think that looks quite nice so far. Even here, we could go possibly and add a compass of some sort, or maybe over here. We could add a compass, and here we could add something else like time. Just a thought. We don't have to do it. Uh, but yeah, let's go and spawn that, and let's see how that's going to look now. And then I want to get some lights inside the cabin. will be the next thing that I want to do. Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. You have easy access to that screen. You have all our dials. We got our throttle lever. We got our speed there. That person will have everything he needs. I think I will add some stuff onto that little screen there. All right. Okay. So we've got that all in. The next thing I want to do is some lighting. Now, what I like to do to really create like a really dramatic interior is I like to use spotlights. So what we're going to do is we're going to come just above the driver here and we're going to go directly up to the center line which is probably about there yeah and we're just going to go and add in spotlight above him like so we're then going to go over to the next person and do the same thing yeah that could work cool let's go and do some painting so i'm just going to paint this interior part and we're going to go and paint the exterior and we're going to do the same where we're going to get this all hooked up to player sensors so that if anyone walks inside this room that those lights are going to go on. So play a sensor just over there, get dark color, put it there. And then that is, let's get all the electricity connected. So we can get that all on the same circuit in theory. So that there, 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 and there. 
that's going to go directly to our battery for now and then we can get our player sensor connected to the spotlight one two three four five six seven okay and let's go into the settings of the player sensor let's do 10 meters hemisphere is perfect and let's go and just change the color now so we're going to go and do additive and we're going to go to let's see let's go to our dark dark brown so we're going to go 0 10 20 so almost black almost almost black and we'll see how that looks uh, 20 cool we can go over to these lights now you can see how they change in color straight away now if we wanted something brighter in here we could go with a brighter color but for now, let's go with quite a dimmed color. We could always even do RGB lights in here so we could change the tone of the lighting if we wanted to. Uh, let's go and spawn that in. Let's go and get our... Actually, let's leave it for daytime now. Let's go inside. Let's see what it's going to look like once we get inside. That's very yellow. <laughs> okay, so we're going to change that. So let's go into our paint again. Let's go with complete black, black and black. Maybe three, three and three. So let's have a look and see what that's going to look like. Let's get symmetry on also. We're going to go over here, 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 and here. Let's see what that looks like. So that should be a white color now coming out those lights, but very, very faint. Spotlights are very strong in any case. Yep, look at that. So beautiful white light in this interior. You can hardly see the spotlights. And I think at nighttime, this is going to look even better. So can you imagine coming here at nighttime? Nice dark lights. Yeah, nice spotlights on everything. We could add like some just normal lights on top of the roofing here because it is quite dark up there. You can't really see up there. But uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Let's add some, just some regular regular lights up at the top uh, just to make it look ever what's so normal. Okay, now you can kind of see the top area, which looks better now, I think. I still like how it's spot down got the spotlight facing down which i think looks really and you can kind of see that i think it looks really cool with the spotlights facing down but yeah so that's the interior part we still need to do the spotlights in the staircase one light there another one is going to go over there another one over there another one over there and last one over there cool and let's just go and paint that paint 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 Let's make sure we have all the electricity still okay. So there, 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 there. And that gets connected to that circuit. On off from the player sensor. There, there, and there. And then the last thing we need to do is just make sure we go to additive and change the color. So we're probably going to go with a... So there, 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 and there. Okay, so it should be a little bit brighter now. Let's get our flashlight on. Let's jump on this deck. Cool. Let's jump in. Yeah, much brighter. And we'll probably get some lights inside these rooms too. Cool. Happy with that so far. I actually want to see what it looks like on the outside from night time. Yeah, it looks nice. We need to add some deck lighting also, so that's probably another thing that we need to go and do. Uh, we can turn that off. We could even, we could add a an option onto the play, player sensors and say if if the player sensor comes on and it is also nighttime, then only turn the lights on because that way we'll conserve electricity during the day. Uh, so that is another option we could do. But uh, I think we're we're getting quite far with this now and it's starting to look pretty cool i think the next thing we need to do is probably get all the systems and get everything done inside the actual main cockpit we also need to get the cabins done with the beds and medical beds and chairs and seating like that uh and then we just got pretty much just a little more painting to do a little more detailing to do and equipment that we need to get and then the boat is theoretically done which is pretty cool but I think that is a great place to end this episode. As always, I hope you have enjoyed this and found it entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.